Hello and welcome everyone to our 46th session of Hallo Casa. My name is Michael and today I'll be talking to Ofelia Ujoa, President of Costa Rica Soul First Realty and International Ambassador of Costa Rica to foreign real estate investors. Um, Ofelia is building bridges between continents and countries, especially for Costa Rica, obviously, and I'm super happy to have her today on the show. Um, Ofelia, welcome to the show. Why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Well, thank you, Michael. It really is a pleasure to be in your program of Hello Casa. Thank you. I'm going to put my glasses on because I think I'm going to read my bio so that we can go on to what you ra rather talk about. Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a broker. And as mm -hmm. you said, I'm owner of Costa Rica Solfers Realty mm -hmm. with an emphasis on the sale uh, and rental uh, of residential properties in the west zone of San Jose, which mm -hmm. is the capital of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. and the fastest growing area of the country. I am a sales director of projects in Costa Rica and in charge of sales of the entire projects in Costa Rica with an experience of more than 20, 20 years mm -hmm. in real estate. Since, since Costa Rica is uh, an ecological green country and a world leader in preserving and contributing to the ecology of our planet, I am now promoting the investment on private forest reserves in Costa Rica and Latin America. Mm -hmm. I am currently an international director of the Costa Rican Chamber of Real Estate Brokers. In Spanish, it is Cámara Costarricense de Corredores de Bienes Raíces. Mm -hmm. uh, the initials are C CCCBR. Mm -hmm. uh, I am now uh, CELAS president-elect for 2021 and that is the Real Estate Confederation of Latin America. And I have been president of the same uh, entity since 2017 to 2019, and now I'm assuming the uh, presidency elect. Uh, as well as an international member of the uh, board of directors of NAR in 2017, and a very active member to our association, to NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors, which I will mention a little further on mm -hmm. as to what it is, and SILA and FIAPSI. Those are international uh, organizations very important in the global real estate business. Um, I, I think I'm going to skip some of the things that I've done as a presidential advisory group to the NAR. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm skipping it because there's a lot of details that uh, what's important is that I have learned from them so much to where I where I am now. Perfect. So, um, and the other thing is I was, and very proud to tell you that uh, we did in Costa Rica in 2018, the, uh, the third Latin American Real Estate Congress or conference mm -hmm. 2018 with the assistance of 19 countries. And I was the coordinator of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fantastic because it really places us where we wanted, you know, mm -hmm. to unite Latin America and to start doing businesses as well. Perfect. So in, in a formal education, we're not business administration. Uh, graduated from Cardinal Cushing College in Boston mm -hmm. with emphasis in business and uh, interior decorator graduated from LaSalle University in Chicago. Wow. Most of my life, Michael, uh, my adult life, I should say, 25 years of it, I have been outside of Costa Rica because mm -hmm. of my husband's international business. Mm -hmm. And I've been back to Costa Rica for the last 25 years now. I forgot how many, but it's been yeah. a long time, which I'm really glad to be back. And that's about it in that area. Wow, that's that's. I mean, that's impressive. You are um, affiliated um, in in so many institutions, and you even running uh, running so many presentation uh, um, institutions, and even like heading them, uh, especially with um, with the focus on international trade, international investors coming to and bringing them to Costa Rica. How right. how does that um, how does that work for international investors? Um, the entire connection between them is it that you are attending trade shows in also right. in, in in north america or is it that yeah. you are you're managing them mostly from costa rica um how do you how, how does the business for you work okay let me just tell you a little bit about that i think what's important is that uh uh uh, let me tell you first, there's 
two associations accredited to NAR, which mm -hmm. is the National Association of Realtors that belong in Costa Rica. One is mm -hmm. ours, which I just mentioned. The other mm -hmm. one is the uh, Segregard, which is uh, a very good organization in, um, in the coastal areas, in the Pacific mm -hmm. coastal areas. And we have joined efforts and uh, we attend every year uh, one uh, conference, mm -hmm. an expo conference in November with NAR. Mm -hmm. NAR, just let me tell you really fast, is like I said, is the National Association of Realtors of the United States. Mm -hmm. And our association belongs to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and NAR is the largest association of real estate brokers in the world, with 1,300,000 associates being the organization that most representative real estate agents in the world and belonging to the broker must be a member of an accredited association. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to go to those uh, international events, we must belong to an association that is bilateral partner with NAR. Mm -hmm. Within NAR, we have also other organizations that belong to NAR. One of them is SILA, the one that I explained to you that I'm uh, uh, elected uh, president for 2021. And, and the, the reason that it's so important is because all the countries from Mexico, or the associations that belong to SILA from Mexico all the way to Argentina, have joined forces in order to uh, be heard and be counted in such a large stage as it is NAR. Mm -hmm. uh, why is that important? It is important because when we want to voice our concerns and to, to achieve our common grounds, it is important to talk as an institution. Mm -hmm. And I've been with them for quite a few years, and believe me, they have advanced tremendously with the support of NAR and other entities. And this is what, what we do. Now, in international business is, is a little different than the national business in Costa Rica. And the reason is because uh, not only we have to belong to these associations in order to take advantage of what they, of the tools they offer, but the most important thing, Michael, is the uh, networking. Mm -hmm. uh, our business internationally, because each association or each country country goes by their country laws. We mm -hmm. all know that. Mm -hmm. So what joins us? all those countries, you know, in, in Latin America, from Mexico all the way up to Argentina, it's not, well, it's the Spanish and Portuguese, not only the language, but the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. Ethics international is the key thing. Mm -hmm. Not only that, is what really creates the uh, trust mm -hmm. and the networking when we do it in order to get business. When we go to these conferences, uh, which with NARD is twice a year, once in November and the other one in the May, for different reasons altogether. One is to lobby all mm -hmm. the concerns in Washington, and the one in November is to really get all the uh, the tools, you know, t for us to really get better real realtors, but also to um, to exchange products, to exchange mm -hmm. ideas. I've been fortunate enough to talk at many of these international events as why to invest in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Because like I told uh, um, most people that listens to me and they, they even make fun of me sometimes and uh, rightly so, I always say we are ambassadors of our own country. When Absolutely. we represent a institution outside of our countries, we become ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, to go and talk about how to invest in Costa Rica and how to do it, we need to not only know our products, we need to know our country. Absolutely. Why should the investors should come to Costa Rica? So I am fortunate enough to represent a country that is not only very dear to me, but to me is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And I will tell you later why. Absolutely. But uh, uh, right now, I think what's important talking about the tools. Mm -hmm. Another organization that I belong to is FIAPSI. FIAPSI mm -hmm. is uh, um, an international federation uh, that is based in, uh, in, in Paris, France. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do, they're very conscious of the uh, uh, 
affordable house affordable uh, housing mm -hmm. all over the world mm -hmm. and they have a lot of connections with the united nations and they voice their their concerns not only to lobby on each country that needs it but also bring all their knowledge and their expertise in this sort of endeavor mm -hmm. and it's almost like a mission uh I am very proud of this group because yeah. they do uh, amazing things around the world and also very proud of NAR because they are the organization that opened up my eyes mm -hmm. and my opportunities for the international part of it. And SILA, of course, that I love so much because now it's part of my SILA family, as I call it. Yeah. Now we belong to all these groups and gives us tremendous opportunities to not only exchange the idiosyncrasies of our countries, but to bring our products and our businesses together in a group, yeah. which is a lot easier. So yeah. this is one of the tools that we need to know. And, and the networking, Michael, uh, right now, I met you today for the first time, and yeah. I think once we leave this, we're going to be friends, and this is what this is about. It's connecting, it's networking, getting to know you, so that uh, when we do business, you will know who I am, and I will know who you are, and that is uh, the trust plus the knowledge that we get through all these years and experience to pass it on to our clients. I, I totally agree. And I think uh, that's also, I mean, thank you so much for, for, for explaining all that. And I think uh, it's exactly about trust. It all boils down to peer-to-peer uh, -peer transactions. In fact, it's a personal personal transaction. It's not I, only about the property itself where you're, you're going to invest, but it's also especially like, who are you dealing with? Can you trust this person? And then also finding trustworthy partners. I'm curious, you just mentioned all these um, international uh, associations and uh, the entire network. How does it work on a daily basis? Are you also interacting with people from, I don't know, Paraguay, from Argentina, as you mentioned, from the US, and saying, okay, you, hey, hey, broker, uh, Mary from uh, New Jersey, I have, a, I have a potential investor or a potential buyer, here's, here's a lead for you, and uh, we make 50-50. How, how can I uh, imagine this? exact approach yeah. um well this is this is uh this international opportunity is not just making friends and and connecting literally michael all over the world mm -hmm. and this is something that i did not explain NAR offers a tremendous programs of educations uh like i mentioned every year in november is in a different state of the united states and we have 20,000 to 25,000 people attending the wow. national NAR and the international pavilion. And it's amazing the, uh, the, the uh, education, the tools that we have, but they also have what they call designations and certifications. Mm -hmm. Some of them is the CIPS. Mm -hmm. CIPS is a certified international property specialist. Okay. What that means is that if I go through that is because I'm going to learn how to do business in the five continents of the world. Mm -hmm. If I go to China, I'm going to know how to deal and how to behave protocol wise with them as well as Japan as well any place in the Asian yep. world, but if you go also to North or South America or to Central Europe or, or uh, the Middle East mm -hmm. or uh, Africa, we know. So why is it important? Because when people attend this sort of uh, uh, designations and I need uh, someone in Africa, for instance, yeah. Ghana, okay? Yeah. So I go into uh, the web page and into the CIPS people that are literally all over the world. And I know in Ghana, I have Michael Franz, yeah. okay? Michael Franz, as soon as I connect with you, I'm going to have a smile from ear to ear because I know what Michael Franz mm -hmm. knows. Mm -hmm. So that connection of CIPS is another family. We also have and Facebook, you know, we are t connected that way, but also uh, in the places that we are not immediately, you know, they tell us the names of the people and uh, we have all that information through, through the web page mm -hmm. and uh, uh, in NAR. So this is what this is about. Uh, people connecting with people with knowledge because yeah. Yeah. you not only trust the person 
is you have to have the knowledge in order to serve that person any place in the world. Yeah. So this yeah. is, I think, the main the reason of the education and the programs that NER is so good about that, as well as SILA mm -hmm. in Latin America, as well as FIAPSI all over the world. So yeah. this yeah. is, I'm very lucky that I'm connected with this organization. Oh, oh. Absolutely. I mean, it also, I think, makes total sense, especially for the end consumer. I mean, once I know as an end consumer, this is a certificate, certified uh, realtor, I am obviously, like, let's say, I'm quite aware that, the, that I'm dealing with someone who's sophisticated and professional. Funnily, I was talking to um, one interview guest uh, two weeks ago from Germany, and he was like, more or less, like, exactly illustrating this this lack of, of professionalism when it comes to the German leg leg legislation, where Germany is like lacking behind on a, a lot of like let's say legal legal uh, certifications, while I think especially the US is obviously like um, the the um, the most sophisticated market and the most advanced market uh, in the world concerning real estate um, associations and all certifications. That's, I mean, let's, let's um, if, if you don't mind, let's talk a little bit and uh, change topic towards now Costa Rica, where you're from, sure. and, and, and go a little bit uh, on, on detail um, about like the immense and beauty about this country itself. Well, and, uh, that's one of my favorite topics, Mike. Perfect, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it is. About, yeah, but uh, yeah. I wanted to, uh, talking about Costa Rica, Costa Rica does not have a, uh, a licensed real, realtor, though our association has presented to our legislative um, body in mm -hmm. Costa Rica to, to have it. So we are in that process. That's why countries like ours that do not have it, or in some places in Germany that don't have it, what applies is the Code of Ethics International yeah, that we have to sign and to abide by with NAR, with SILA, and with FIAPSI. So and, that's very important. And, and then, it, and then, exactly in those markets, it becomes even more more important to to uh, deal with someone with such a certification. That's the common ground. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, well, Costa Rica, like I told you, that's my favorite topic. <laughs> when I go there, uh, you know, a few years ago, Michael. Talking about Costa Rica, it was a bit frustrating because they would confuse us with Puerto Rico, which is an island in the Caribbean. Okay. Yeah. And it was always a frustration for us because we are nothing like that. Yeah. And uh, in the last, I would say, in the last 15 years, it's a pleasure to know that everyone in Costa Rica, uh, I mean, in the world, knows what Costa Rica is. Yeah. So that, in the... In the talking and give a conference about how to invest in Costa Rica, uh, people will yell different phrases that typifies us here. And of course, you know, then we start talking about our country. Yeah. Our country is unique. Uh, Costa Rica is in Central America and mm -hmm. it's located in the, uh, in the middle of Central America. And we have at the north, we have Nicaragua. On the south, we have Panama. Mm -hmm. uh, we are so blessed with climate that uh, and we're known by microclimates. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to live in San Jose, which is the capital, and here we can have rain today. Uh, in five minutes later, we have the sun or vice versa. We have the mountain, we have the, uh, the oceans. We have two oceans. We have the mm -hmm. Pacific and the Atlantic and uh, mountains and valleys. We have it. Mm -hmm. In Costa Rica, of course, is number one green country. And that we're very proud because our um, history has made us preserve this country. And why are we different? We are different because of the human resources. Costa Rica does not have an army, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't. So each cent that we do not spend on army, we spend it on education. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a saying saying, that for each soldier that we do not have, we have a school. Mm -hmm. And 93.6 mm -hmm. of the country is literacy rate, so it's wow. very high. So our education is the main, main investment. In fact, this is what the, most of our budget goes. Um, it's a very friendly country to the foreigners. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you come and invest here, 
not only you are going to feel welcome, but also if you speak English, you will find that most of us speak the language. Mm -hmm. And that is a, a, a big attraction because most of the attraction of Costa Rica is ecotourism. Mm -hmm. So when you come here, you really go out, outside of San Jose or within the GAM area to go and see all these beautiful places that Costa Rica have. We don't have uh, extreme uh, temperatures. Mm -hmm. You know, Costa Rica is 65 to 75 degrees all year round. When we have the hot temperatures, is in the coastal areas. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, an ideal country, you know, yep. climate-wise. Uh, we are not perfect. Uh, we uh, need to invest in infrastructure, which our current government is trying to do that. And uh, um, those are the things that we need to work on. But to me, uh, to invest in Costa Rica is safe for a lot of reasons. And I think I'm going to read a bit about it. Absolutely. Because I will go a bit faster on that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what's, let me see. I just wanted to get... Uh, oh, yeah. Like I told you, the political risk, you know, that's important. Our areas, as most people know, it's, uh, it's a bit uh, hot sometimes with the political uh, problems that we have in the area. Costa Rica, it's, it's, it's one of the most stable mm -hmm. democracies in the world. No army, no wars, no revolutions. A peaceful country where dialogue is our most useful weapon. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I really emphasize dialogue. Mm -hmm. We don't fight, we talk. Mm -hmm. We don't, because we're not, we're not used to seeing the guns and things. Mm -hmm. So what is our weapon? Talking. Mm -hmm. We need to resolve our problems by talking. Mm -hmm. So we are very proud of that. And also we have a Nobel Peace Prize winner in Costa Rica, which also makes us quite different because this is what Costa Rica is about. Yeah. We yeah. strive for peace. We strive for democracy. Safety is extremely friendly to welcome mm -hmm. foreigners. Uh, they have the same rights by our constitution as Costa Ricans, the economy. Costa Rica has a very stable economy. The protections in the Costa Rican financial system help to avoid severe impact from the past financial crisis. Mm -hmm. It has boosted the economy by taking positive measures and keeping the inflation low and to lower the banking interest rate. Right now, we're going through, a, a, through an adjustment process because last year, uh, 20. 19 was a bit difficult for the real estate uh, industry because uh, the government gave us a new tax package, mm -hmm. which sort of shook the, uh, uh, the floor from under us. But now we have adjusted. Now we wanted to see results. We were uncertain. So that created some uncertainty and uh, uh, our business suffered from it. But now it has a very positive outlook. We can see what's going on. Uh, I can see the enthusiasm again, and that is, to me, uh, very important for the country. Mm -hmm. uh, education, like I said, that's our biggest asset is education. And uh, most of our budget is that, like I said, the literally rate in Costa Rica is 96.3, mm -hmm. one of the highest in Latin America, Michael. Health also extremely important. Costa Rica has been cited as Central America great health successful story. It has provided universal health care to its wage earning residents and has become a popular destination for medical tourism. Uh, the uh, most of our doctors, mm -hmm. professional doctors that specializes in medicine, in medicine, they go usually outside of Costa Rica after they done the university here, they go and educate themselves to the state, to Europe or South America, any place that they need to go in order to um, increase their knowledge in their own field. Mm -hmm. So when you have a doctor here, you will be able to see that our doctors, all of them speak obviously English, but usually another language as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, they're very well educated uh, and we absorb, we're copy, copycats, I think, but we're copycats of good things, yeah. Michael. Yeah. 
Copycats, if, if the States has something that we really like, well, heck, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, we copy it, but we do that. But it doesn't make us perfect, but we make us people that welcome the foreigners. And I think that makes us quite a, quite a different from, from a lot of countries in, in this area. Absolutely. Um, I, now, I um, lately got to know uh, one person from Costa Rica and she was a, a doctor as well. And she, then she also told me about like the very, very good healthcare infrastructure. And also, obviously, along this one comes also the not only the purchasing uh, power, but also um, the salary, you know, like um, for her yes. uh, traveling across across uh, Southeast Asia was like very affordable because you also have like a very high 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 standard of living which comes along yes. and which also obviously is being triggered by the by the high high level of education i assume well this is what i was going to say cuz costa rica is not cheap mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. it's expensive but it's expensive because the human resources and uh, the opportunities in costa rica are not of maquila maquila here is what uh, uh, when you go and employ people to to for, for clothing and that sort of thing. No, this mm -hmm. is a technical country. You know, yeah. we have a lot of high tech companies here like Intel and many others that mm -hmm. uh, have settled in Costa Rica for the high end education that the uh, that our uh, country offers. So that's important. And this But, is, um, uh, let me just do another comment. And this is also um, very interesting to see that, you know, companies are settling in Costa Rica, not because it's that cheap. So they even are, Uh, motivated, awesome. they even are motivated to pay the higher to, to pay the higher price for the higher salary. But however, you know, because of the attractive, attractiveness of the other aspects, which which Costa Rica um, um, allows the companies to leverage, be it be the it human uh, the human resource is very high. Yeah. And also, there's something very important. I don't know if you know, but most people know about Costa Rica. The term pura vida. Yeah. Pura vida is, means literally pure life. Yeah. But this is the way we say hello, how are you? Uh, it's almost like shalom, you know, mm -hmm. to the Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. They use it for a lot of things. Well, pura vida for us is uh, how are you? Uh, if they like something, pura vida. Yeah. Can I take you someplace? Pura vida. They are always willing to help. Yeah. The only advice I have for foreigners, always ask twice to somebody because Costa Ricans hate not to give help if you okay. if, if i ask if you were costa rican michael and i said michael would you please tell me how to go from here to there and if you don't know you would probably say well yeah i think it is here mm -hmm. and then because of it i think it's always best to ask a second person because they want to help always so much that they would the second person okay, yeah. probably will give you the right address <laughs> this is part of how we are you know so this is i think it's nice and it, it, it typifies us Uh, who we are, yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, you, you and the bit, yeah. no, go ahead, go Excuse ahead, me. please. No, I said, and because of it, uh, the investment is very attractive. Also, location, you know, mm -hmm. in, in in the real estate, we have this words location, location, location. Mm -hmm. Well, Costa Rican's location is ideal. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of Central America, where you have the accessibility to the north, the accessibility mm -hmm. to the south. And we have the oceans to go either way. Mm -hmm. So uh, and the uh, and we're blessed. I don't know what it is because I am not one uh, knowledgeable in the climate. But Costa Rica doesn't have extreme uh, storms or none mm -hmm. of those things that happens uh, in different countries mm -hmm. around, even around us. Yeah. yeah so we're Korea, blessed. Yeah. And I happen to think that uh, the country. And, and they make fun of me when I say that, that we are chosen. We are chosen because I can see a lot of things that happen in Costa Rica's always stayed where it is. So mm -hmm. we hopefully and we pray that we'll continue to be so for many, many years to come. And um, um, to, it, it, I don't know if you want to talk about investment or would you um, like to? For, for me, it would be, before we go into the investment, it would be okay. a, a little bit interesting also to go a little bit about the geography because you are not only active in San Jose, yeah. but also in Guanacaste. Yes, of for, course. Yes. For those people who don't know Guanacaste, um, can you illustrate that in a, in a few words? What is it? Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. And also... Why did you choose to be active in real estate in, in that uh, in that area? Well, first of all, my mom is from that area, so mm -hmm. that's that's 
one reason and and the, and uh, as I was a child growing up, you know, my vacations was in Guanacaste, mm -hmm. but also is a destination very much preferred by a lot of Costa Ricans because of their beautiful beach areas. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we have two coastal areas. Mm -hmm. So we have the Pacific and uh, Guanacaste Central Pacific, Central North Pacific. Mm -hmm. And we also have Punta Arenas, which is, to me, the closest beach is about an hour to the beach. In fact, yesterday I was there and it was uh, beautiful to go just and come back on the same day and enjoy a gorgeous day of beach and and uh, fun sun. And, uh, and the variety is very plush. Mm -hmm. When Acosta is dry mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and hot, but because it is so dry, you don't feel so much the humidity. It's comparable to, uh, uh, I lived in California, so mm -hmm. in some parts of California, I, I lived in Orange County. It was in the summer, unless the temperatures were very high, which we do not have them here. It was dry, so you, you take it more than when it is humid. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it is preferred by the Americans because this, like you wanted to come, there's a lot of surfing. Yep. Uh, there is uh, not only the so many beach uh, differences. You have the the turtles. You have the, the biodiversity in Costa Rica of flora and fauna is unlike anybody in the world. So you mm -hmm. get to see. In on a beach, you get in San Antonio, in, in, in um, Manuel Antonio, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you get to see uh, the monkeys and the flowers and the uh, birds and the bees. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, you have to really uh, <laughs> just not to miss the yeah. biodiversity that we have. Being such a small country, we have an amazing amount of uh, flora and fauna to show everyone. Now, the other part of uh, the coastal area of Costa Rica, which is amazing, is Limon. Limon mm -hmm. is the, uh, uh, the the Atlantic side of Costa Rica, which is very plush, mm -hmm. very beautiful. The beach also gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This caters a little more to the Europeans because it's more rocky. The okay. beach here is rocky. The ones in Guanacaste are not. If you like white sand and more sand than rocks, then Guanacaste or the coastal areas in, in the Pacific will be better for you. If you like okay. the rock and the plushness and more humidity, which you will have there, then Limon offers that. And there are different backgrounds. You know, we have uh, um, a lot of different uh, forms of eating. Eating mm -hmm. is different and the restaurants are amazing either place. Mm -hmm. But in I happen to love to the cuisine of, of um, uh, Limon, and uh, most people not only go for that, but to enjoy their beautiful beach and the uh, amazing sunsets. But to me, uh, not only is beautiful, but also to see a little difference from where I live and where I go all the time, which Absolutely. is Guanacaste. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that means in um, we obviously we have so many regions and so many coastal regions. Uh, right. You just mentioned Guanacaste, Limon, and all, uh, Guanacaste, Limon, and Punta Arenas. And you mentioned Punta Arenas is is a, uh, you really can access that within one one hour by car. Oh yeah, this is where where Jaco is, Herradura. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, beach area there, mm -hmm. and uh, you see uh, the south of the. Uh, uh, Pacific area, you see the wells, you know, which is amazing. Okay. Yeah, so and the fishing, the fishing, you know, marlin so, fishing, whatever. So, so that means that um, if I live in in San Jose itself, it is definitely like um, I don't even need to to uh, think about okay, moving outside of San Jose because I'm I'm craving craving the the beach because. Whenever I feel like during the weekend, I can I can um, go in the car or, or take a bus and then uh, be there in a couple of hours. Let's say you know, let's say commute is a little bit uh, is a bit longer on on the weekends, but it's definitely doable. Yes, of of course it is doable. Mm -hmm. Our problem, like I mentioned to you, is the saturation of cars. So we have more mm -hmm. cars than we have roads. Mm -hmm. So to travel 
on rush hours from one point to the other is a bit difficult sometimes. Okay. However, however, uh, it all depends what you want to do. If you really want to do surfing, then of course to live in the, in any part of the Central Pacific and also as well as in the Limon and the Atlantic side, you choose what you like and you, you have a lot of activities. Now, if you happen to like all the activities of the city, which uh, it will be, you know, from a lot of uh, um, restaurants, Costa Ricans celebrate everything by eating, Michael. So mm -hmm. we have restaurants galore from every every corner of the world. Uh, there's a big influence, of course, of people from Spain, uh, uh, Germans. We have mm -hmm. a lot of Germans. In fact, my brother is married to, to, to a German girl. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, uh, the Italians. Uh, the, uh, the Jewish community here is extremely helpful mm -hmm. in, in Costa Rica and they've been with us for many, many years. And also we have the Europeans that go in different areas. So you see them every place in the country mm -hmm. because you have the mountains and this microclimate makes you choose what you like. So mm -hmm. my, my recommendation, it always says, Tell me exactly what you want and what are your activities and we place you. Mm -hmm. But I always think before you decide, come about a week or so and go here and there yeah. and then you find out because some people change their minds. I want to do this. And then when they see the other option that is better or more likable, they may change, change their minds. Absolutely. But Costa Rica being so small is a place that would amaze you. Yeah. Um Looking at the map of Costa Rica and also um, the, the regions you just mentioned, w in combination with the foreigners having having emigrated to to um, to Costa Rica um, from different parts of the world, um, would you say you can segment the country itself into, let's say, very developed and already having experienced a lot of investment, being kind of mature in its in its way, versus parts of Costa Rica where you say, okay, it's actually still quite hovering, quite quite um, quite uh, affordable to, to invest or to buy land, which hasn't, which is still quite untouched. Um, and then we might even go to, to our next topic concerning uh, the forest, uh, the, the um, forestation of, um, of um, the forestation pro project of, of Costa Rica. But first of all, like a segmentation of the development of, of Costa Rica uh, as a whole? Well, Costa Rica, to me, it should have been a developed country by now mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons, for what I already explained to you. What is keeping us, and this is my own personal opinion, it's perhaps um, our bureaucracy, mm -hmm. really. I think... Uh, uh, we have the resources, we have uh, everything that a country needs in order to be a developed country. And we're going towards that. Mm -hmm. Our present, uh, 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 our current president, mm -hmm. Senor Carlos Alvarado, is a young president who has that vision and he wants to advance towards that. And he's, he's trying to do it. Uh, and I think we will we will uh, achieve it. Mm -hmm. I think the, the right steps are going. I can see it with the younger generations, you know, the millennials right now are really revolutionizing a lot of the thinking here, mm -hmm. how they work, how they live, how they move, so that we have to accommodate that part of thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I think Costa Rica is ready for that. Mm -hmm. And we're really, Michael, an example, mm -hmm. an example uh, of a country that strives for peace, mm -hmm. uh, for dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, we are spoiled. You know why? Mm -hmm. And I tell my people, we are spoiled. We we don't, we haven't had any to suffer wars except for, for a civil war that we had. Mm -hmm. But I mean, big wars like a lot of people have, some in the region, not Costa Rica. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of it, sometimes we do not appreciate what we have because mm -hmm. we haven't... Uh, I lost any of it like some of the people who come to Costa Rica have. Mm -hmm. We have the migration in Costa Rica of foreigners is over a million. Most mm -hmm. of them are from Nicaragua, 
from Colombia and a lot from Venezuela because mm -hmm. of their political situations. Mm -hmm. But Costa Rica welcomes that and the opportunity for them to join us. And there's a lot of good opportunity. The health program in Costa Rica, it's unbelievable and mm -hmm. is to me one of the best. And the opportunity is, is expensive, yes. But I think the human resource and the studies and the standard of living of the Costa Ricans are different from other countries. Mm -hmm. Great, awesome. Um, tell us a little bit about San Jose. You're based in San Jose itself. Yeah. Um, for for me, as as a person who has never been to San Jose, how can I imagine the city? Is it um, what does it have to offer? Some you know, give me a quick overview of the city itself. Well, uh, San Jose is divided in the north, uh, the east and the west. Mm -hmm. I happen to live in the west side of uh, um, San Jose. When you mm -hmm. enter into our main uh, international airport in, in San Jose, well, actually it's in Alajuela, but you go from there into San Jose, mm -hmm. then you either turn to the right or to the left. If you turn to the right, then you're going towards the west where I live. Okay. And we have the National Stadium, and uh, I don't know if you like soccer, but Costa Rica is number, this is, we thrive on yeah. that. <laughs> and we have Keylor Navas, I don't know if you're yeah. in football, and we are very proud of it, and we breathe uh, mm -hmm. uh, football, mm -hmm. you know. They call them soccer in the States, but we call it football. Yeah. So uh, we have the stadium, which we do a lot of activities there. Uh, from the government and private activities too. And then from the stadium to the west, then we have very good residential areas. It is called Romoser, which is where I live. Mm -hmm. And then it goes Escazú, and it goes Santana, Ciudad Colón, and it goes towards the west, and that's where you go towards the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to the left, also you're going to find a very beautiful part of San Jose, Uh, you will go downtown, and Costa Rica has a lot to offer. We have a beautiful national theater. The culture here, Michael, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. We have mm -hmm. a fantastic symphony, mm -hmm. uh, good museums, uh, restaurants every place of every kind of food, and then you have the hospitals in the east and the west, mm -hmm. private and public hospitals, mm -hmm. and you have the malls. So all kinds of activities, especially for the young people to entertain themselves, it's amazing. Like any people who live in the city, you know, it's things for improvement because mm -hmm. it is the majority of the Costa Ricans are concentrated in the GAM area, which is the great metropolitan area, yeah. which is the other provinces close to San Jose yeah. live and work. So we yeah. have the major concentration, but because of it, there's a variety of things for you to do. If yeah. you like the rural, more peaceful uh, water, more laid back, more relaxed, then you go to the coastal areas oh, and some of the provinces like Heredia and Alajuela mm -hmm. that offer many, and Cartago that offer many other things. We have mm -hmm. the volcanoes. Uh, we got We got everything, anything yeah. that has to do with eco, natural, ecotourism, natural things is, is, is healthy. Something yeah. else that is important. Do you know that Costa Rica banned smoking in Costa Rica? No. In the public places? So this is to show you that we are trying to uh, show our people, first of all, changing habits of eating, yeah. uh, preserving our health, not only to exercise and eco eco-tourism, but also keeping our bodies health and mm -hmm. eating right. There's a lot of organic um, uh, produce right now that most young ones and the older ones are trying to 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 go into. So mm -hmm. it is, uh, 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 Costa Rican is, is health and social conscious mm -hmm. for the health of the country. And uh, you see it, you see it in our kids and how well they perform in sports. Awesome. Um, It really sounds like there's no reason actually to to leave Costa Rica because you have like you know you like you have the biodiversity you have the coastlines you have the metropolitan area where where you get like all the things where, where once you you crave for for that a little bit um, can you dig a little bit deeper deeper concerning the neighborhoods of San Jose um, how can I 
is there a segmentation of like maybe exclusive neighborhoods versus um, more affordable neighborhoods versus emerging neighborhoods? And do you maybe have a tip of saying, okay, you know, this neighborhood has not ha had or has not experienced like huge um, infrastructure makeups uh, during the last decades, and I think like within the next years that, that might be a new area where 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 you see like um, nice appreciation of of price. Give me your take on on that. Well, Costa Rica is unique in what I'm going to mention also. Uh, we have gated communities mm -hmm. on both sides, in the east side and on the west side. And uh, most of it was uh, created about 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the reason was to uh, a lot of traveling, you know, for the uh, parents. So they wanted something uh, more confined and more gated like it is in the States, you know. Mm -hmm. So that be, that's we also have the residential, the vertical and horizontal condominiums. You Absolutely. Know? Mm -hmm. And that is also for the same reason. Now, uh, one of the political uh, movements uh, a few years ago was to uh, create the high rises around the city of San Jose in order to attract the businesses downtown and not and to keep them outside of the uh, busy highways. Got it. So that they're doing that and you see very affordable housing that goes, you know, um, I'm going to talk in dollars. It goes to mm -hmm. from a hundred thousand dollars up to a million or more, you know, okay. but it's affordable in different parts of, of, uh, of the GAM area. Mm -hmm. So, so what the developers are trying to do is to cater to the working people and to uh, uh, get this housing affordable and close to them. So for two reasons, not only for them to have the opportunity to have housing, but to keep everyone out of the roads. Now mm -hmm. we are uh, having the uh, an electrical train, which is one of the projects that the first lady of, uh, of Costa Rica is trying to to lead, and uh, if that happens also, that is going to contribute to get the cars out. So this is how uh, the developers and the government are trying to, and the Ministry of Housing are trying to work together in order to balance this out and to create uh, the, uh, uh, the more family time mm -hmm. to the people instead of spending their time on the roads. Got it. You know? Yeah. So that's that's what it is. And yes, we do have the high end uh, projects as well as the not so high end projects. But let me tell you something that is amazing and typical of Costa Rica. You mm -hmm. may have a huge project, huge project, beautiful, expensive high end condominium. And next door, you may have one that uh, your neighbor, I should say, it may, mm -hmm. it may not be. I have clients that says, well, you know, but the neighborhood doesn't seem as high end as where I'm buying. Well, in Costa Rica, that is extremely typical, very okay. typical. We, uh, uh, as I was growing up, Michael, the, uh, the middle class was the highest part of it. So there was always a mixture of everybody because all of us went to public schools. We all mixed with everybody, yes. the same opportunities. So if you can afford something high end today or not the other day to live next to you, doesn't depreciate our properties at all on the country. Our, our idiosyncrasy is quite different than perhaps it is in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, what about um, let's say um, you, you before you mentioned some neighborhoods, some uh, um, particular neighborhoods? Um, can you also see there some some particular differences where you say um, because you also have the uh, segmentation of estratos, or is that uh, not common uh, the way I know it from Colombia or other? Latin American countries. Yes, you um, know, we have uh, we have some areas that are yeah. popular areas that uh, um, that are not high end areas, mm -hmm. uh, and the government uh, they're working on that housing also. Costa Rica strives for that. You know, this they make a big effort. It doesn't matter what president is on. They one of the major things they do is to bring the housing not only affordable but to everyone. 
Got it. And since we welcome uh, a lot of foreigners, you know, we also have to provide for that. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, they work hard on that. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that problem. We have, of course, you have the neighborhoods that are exclusive and very expensive and the ones mm -hmm. that are not. But it's not that divides us, no. No, 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 it's absolutely not. It's a matter of, it's a matter of what, what you can afford, you know. Yeah. And do you see, let's say, if you had now, um, let's say, 100K US dollars, um, yeah. be it, um, I don't know, be it a down payment, or you can choose, in fact. Um, is there any certain region, area, project where you would say, this makes sense, this is obviously, I, I know it always depends on what you're looking for or something, but generally speaking, area-wise, project-wise, do you think it is definitely something in general to look at and um, and, and go a little bit uh, deeper concerning potential investment opportunities in San Jose yes, or yes. overall in Costa Rica? It is different. For instance, we have a very high inventory right now uh, in the GAM area, which means it is mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the buyer's market. Mm -hmm. In the coastal areas, they lack inventory. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I have uh, something that, which I think is interested uh, on the um, on what it is the construction. Uh, we go by square meters here, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, in the metropolitan area, it will go from seven hundred to eight hundred and fifty per square meter to build. Now, if you go to Guanacaste or Punta Arenas, the coastal areas, it will be from 600 to 2,000. Okay. Now, if you go on the, uh, um, uh, to sell, you know, horizontal or vertical residential, it goes from 1,200 to 2,300 per square meter in the uh, metropolitan area mm -hmm. and 1,000 to 4,000 in the coastal areas. Okay. So coastal then, area is, is generally more expensive. It, it all depends where also, because okay. there are more areas in the coastal areas that are more expensive than the others. And the reason is because of the fashion or, Absolutely. for instance, you talk surfing uh, the, or the activities or is in fad. Uh, but Guanacaste obviously is uh, uh, very attractive, as well as Punta Arenas and mm -hmm. the south of Punta Arenas, and as well as Limon. So it mm -hmm. all depends. Really but uh, it depending on the activity or where you want to be, you will find the, the variety of prices. So it's not that it's very expensive in the coastal areas. Yeah. And expense. No, no. Uh, you, you'll find whatever uh, your budget will will uh, will afford. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. But, but of course, you know. Uh, an exclusive uh, with a lot of amenities and uh, common areas, which uh, high-end condominiums will have, they will be more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, uh, renting. Renting, uh, uh, it all depends where, but it can go from 800 to 5,000 yeah. per square. Yeah. 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 So it is... It, it, is, it, it, it is very yeah. wide. It's a very wide range on... on it is a wide range. That's why when, when I have... A, a client, I do ask them exactly what they want, what their activities are, and I become an advisor, really, not just on the pro on the prices and the opportunities of the uh, property, but to get to know him or yeah. her as to what he really wants in order to place him where I will think he'll be happiest. It, uh, yeah. Our idea is to, to please the client, and that's our focus, and then uh, once he gives us all the uh, uh, answers to the questions we give them, we show them the uh, the opportunities that uh, uh, the options that we may have for for what he would like. I, I guess um, I have to laugh a little bit right now because I guess you might also almost obtain a psychiatrist uh, certificate because I don't want to <laughs> know you, you once you ask someone. So what do you like? This this answer can can turn out to be a very long conversation sometimes. I assume. Well, I think. <laughs> Uh, you know, I think I'm in the happiest profession because, you know what, Michael, what, what is it that we do? We really make the dreams of what most people invest in their lives, which is their property and a car, you know, average. Yeah, so we guide them, yeah. offer the things, uh, the, 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 uh, the options, and at the end, it's, it's a very happy feeling that you have 
help accomplish their mm -hmm. dream house, their dream property, their dream farm, their dream uh, um, uh, whatever. Yeah. So this is, is a, I love, I'm passionate about my profession. And I think uh, uh, it has sometimes its difficulties, but like anything else, but uh, in the long run, I think it's, it's a very happy profession to be in. Very yeah. nice. No, I, I, I totally agree. And I think what you especially gain from, from that also long lasting relationships, what you said yes. before, you know. You make friends. Absolutely. Well, um, I have another question concerning, you, you just mentioned, we just talked about the areas itself and also um, buying. What are the, do you see any trends concerning the clientele of the buyers? So do you, like, let's say foreigners versus domestic investors, do you see any, any uh, trend? Um, where is it leaning to? Or is it definitely skewed towards one certain direction? And this has been for the last decade and will also remain so? You know, we have a saying here that if the United States has a cold, we have pneumonia. Okay. So <laughs> we depend a lot on the uh, foreign it. investment, you know, to for yeah. second housing, and uh, usually is from the United States. Yeah. And uh, I don't have the up to date uh, uh, percentage of that, but I have mm -hmm. it from last year. So the U.S. investors, uh, as a whole in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. they invested 31 percent where from the states and from Switzerland. 22. This is interesting. Okay. My neighbors. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Quite interesting. So the, the thing is, uh, yes, but, uh, a lot uh, of uh, foreigners that, you know, come just not only on vacation. Something that I have to mention that it really has helped the country in the last two years is the amazing job that the Ministry of Tourism is doing to present Costa Rica as mm -hmm. a fantastic destination they're spending a lot of money really in mm -hmm. europe in the states in canada mm -hmm. and in, in in different parts uh, i think in the middle east well i think i'm not sure about the middle east but i think someone mentioned it to me but i know for sure the uh uh central europe uh america canada yeah. And, and asia yeah. so that is uh one of the main reasons and the attraction is the the uh, the echo yeah, uh, eco tourism, you know, and this is what we strive and we're so proud of, and and that's the main thing. Um, but I would like to mention yeah. because, um, well, I don't know if, if you might be interested or not as to, um, if you invest in here, how much it would cost, you know, to invest. And, and no, on I, the, yeah. I, absolutely. I have just one follow up question. The okay. the percentage okay. you just mentioned that was like of the entire um, foreign direct investment as per real yeah. estate and then National. the share. So so the U.S. makes up 30% of, of the entire property investment uh, for from uh, pouring in from foreigners and the... They come here. The, 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 well, actually is 31% of the uh, of the international people that got came it. here okay. from the states. Okay, got it. And then so we have like uh, um, uh, Switzerland and and uh, the US already already making up fifty percent of the entire international yeah. investment in property. Okay, yeah. got it. Perfect. Just want to make that clear. I, I got that right. Okay. okay. Yes, absolutely. Walk us through the um, investment process um, and yeah. um, the let's say the purchasing process. I'm super curious about that one. Yeah, the purchase process. It's really quite simple, you know, if you have the right people. And uh, in Costa Rica, in order to buy a property, you need a notary. It's mm -hmm. uh, something that we have to have. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of it, well, at least in my case, is most of it is in, in U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. okay. So the down payment is usually 20% of the total sale price if you're going to if you're going to have uh, some sort of financing. However, for foreigners. Uh, the financing is not as easy in the sense that they uh, they will have to either have a corporation here or some sort of investment mm -hmm. uh, in order to open the, a bank account uh, because that is what they would have to if they go Absolutely. through mm -hmm. through a, a local or private banking uh, public or, or private banking here. However, there there is uh, private financing for foreigners, especially from from the United States, mm -hmm. that we offer too. So uh, the closings are short. It could be done in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, we, at least I do, the due diligence of properties are done. Mm -hmm. 
Signing of the papers is done only through a public notary, as I mentioned, registered in the Dirección Nacional de Notariado, mm -hmm. which means uh, in Costa Rica, which means National Registry or Notary Public. Uh, the access may be owned in corporations. Selling or buying may be done by transferring shares or corporations. Inscription of property is done in the public register where all properties in Costa Rica should be registered and known simply as the registro. Mm -hmm. When they are able to confirm the history or title change and determine if there are any restrictions, encumbrances, or liens. Avoiding the purchase of unregistered property is strongly advised. Mm -hmm. uh, if it, the property is not in the National Register, stay away from it. Mm -hmm. So all those are very simple things. And the closing cost is about 4%. Now, it has changed now because of the new uh, tax package that we had. But yep. in essence, it's about 4% of the total sale of the uh, property. And uh, again, the taxes in Costa Rica, uh, uh, taxes income that is generated with the national territorial boundaries, domestic source and source income. Uh, and uh, with this, I was going to read something that I think has changed now, but the regular income tax is between 20 to 30 percent. Mm -hmm. And right now, like I said, the government has propo uh, proposed a new tax package that uh, uh, it's, it's changed somewhat, so especially on rentals and, yeah. and uh, on a so, sales service. So, it's called EVA. So that means um, I have like a normal property um, gain tax. If I sell again, then I have a property gain tax on that. Yes, capital okay. gain tax, yes. Uh, capital gain, thank you. And is that different if I, for example, um, sell within a certain period of time? Like, I don't know if I sell uh, previous to 10 years. In Germany, for example, it's the case that I pay like... Um, a premium because they want to make sure that like flipping is not happening that as much as in the US, for example, or is that always the same? You know, like I it's not the same, especially okay. right now, because with all this new tax package, you know, the results of all that we, we are not seeing it yet. Got it, got as it. As of now, you know, the new tax rules are yeah, we're all bound by it. Yeah, yeah got it, got it. So but uh, do, um, you, do you also um, suggest to use an appraiser? to make sure that uh, the... Uh, yes, I do that. Okay. I do that. Okay. Uh, you know, in the United States, uh, when you buy a home, you have the inspector that comes yeah. and buy the home. Yeah. In Costa Rica, that is not a require, unless you, the owner, will bring your own and you do it on yourself. It's not a yeah. government requirement. Yeah. So because of it, I always, with my properties, because some of them are pretty high end, you yeah. know, I have properties you know, from 300 up to $10 million or wow. more. And uh, so obviously if somebody's considering this, this sort of property, they have to have uh, a vision, uh, yeah. uh, up-to-date appraisal. Yeah. And not only is a good thing to have for both of them, yeah. for the, uh, for the uh, possible buyer, but also for the seller, mm -hmm. because it's a point of reference. Mm -hmm. It's a point of reference and gives you the security that what you're buying is what it is. Absolutely. Most, most, the building in Costa Rica is quite different than it is in the States, Michael. Mm -hmm. Everything here is cement. Okay. Gypsum walls are used, but not like it is in the United States. Mm -hmm. A hurricane that we don't have, but if we would, they will not take our homes Absolutely, away. Absolutely, yeah because they're very, uh, very well built yeah. as well. We are seismic because we have a lot of volcanoes. Mm -hmm. The seismic code in Costa Rica is one of the best in the world and they're applied. Mm -hmm. So to live in a high rise here is no problem because it, it all goes by those rules imposed yeah. for the government and by structural engineers that yeah. we have, they're very good ones. I remember that from one interview from Chile, they also have like the seismic uh, standards is like super high yeah. and um, because obviously of the risk, which which in, in, in the end, um, you know, is a huge benefit for for the tenants and, and, and for the entire society because it's much, much safer. Um, yeah. Concerning then also the, the entire, um, you, you just mentioned the um, money transfer, you just mentioned the financing. Assuming that I have, you know, I 
want to pay in cash and I have the money for, um, on my on my Swiss bank account on my US bank account um, how would that be that you know I'm not afraid that I don't know like you know the property owner is running away with my well, with my money how how do you assure ensure this this process that um, everything I, is I, like I put them in a trust okay yeah they okay. are trust but also let me tell you the banking laws right now actually all over the world but in mm -hmm. Costa Rica they're very strict mm -hmm. So if you're gonna let's assume you have your 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 money in Germany and mm -hmm. uh, you want to buy a property from me here, mm -hmm. so the first thing we and you come here and you light the property and I says Michael, uh, I'm gonna send you the contract, and then that contract has to be shown in your bank in Germany mm -hmm. in order to satisfy perhaps not your German bank but to satisfy the bank in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Then you have a contract, you justify that uh, transfer. Mm -hmm. When we get the transfer, we also, as uh, um, realtors, are responsible for the source of the money, to know where it comes from, to mm -hmm. get to know the client, like mm -hmm. uh, the banks tell us. But the transfers are usually done from bank to bank. And if okay. it isn't a trust, it's fine. And also, we do have um, the, the, the titles, the, 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 uh, the trust and the steward title, for instance, but a lot of good loyal firms have that mm -hmm. in service. In fact, my company offers that. You know, we have uh, a legal team that uh, offers not only the trust, but also uh, the uh, all the uh, legal requirements and that if it is done correctly, it should not be any problem. It's like uh, everyone now simply wants to know the source of the money because Got of it. all the laundering money all over the world. Yeah. So that is not only imposed here, actually it's imposed all over the world, Every yeah. Place. And anyway, yeah. but even, it's no problem as long as you have a legitimate uh, transaction to do yeah. from back to back. Absolutely. I mean, even tax authorities are, are linked um, across the across the Atlantic and stuff. So uh, this is is um, I think like for the normal, let's say for the normal human being, it's quite a, quite hard to to um, to, to get through. Um, have you done a transaction where the person? hasn't even put a foot on the land of Costa Rica? Yes. Really? I mean, not, yeah, not, not often, because I remember one time that uh, it was, in fact, it was one of my first transactions. Uh, but it, it is not difficult. In fact, it's okay. done by a lot of people. But for me, it was just once that I remember when the trans, I showed the properties, I sent all the information. But the good thing about it with, the internet with all this high technology, mm -hmm. you see everything. Yeah. You know, you send the pictures, you send this, they know exactly what they want. Yes, and it was sold that way. In fact, it was a property in, in Guanacaste wow. to a lovely, uh, they were French Canadians who live in the States and they mm -hmm. bought it that way. And when they came here, they were just as happy because it was no difference than the, than what they we told us to do. But mm -hmm. that has to be done with reputable Realtors, mm, yeah, yeah. and that's why it's important who you choose to do that sort of transactions. We become um, advisors. We yeah. become uh, uh, responsible for what we show you and for what we offer you. And uh, one responsibility is that you know mm -hmm. to make sure that what I'm giving you and telling you is what you're going to get. So that uh, uh, there's a lot of informality in Costa Rica with realtors also, Michael, that do yeah. not belong to the, any of the two associations that I spoke to you yeah. previously. But uh, uh, the ones that have experience and the knowledge, because Costa Rica is so small, somehow people will know, you know, you know other, yeah. who you can deal with and who, who yeah. cannot. Yeah. So that's that's the advantage of such a small country that we can still do that yeah know? no i i i, I totally um, i can totally imagine i even see that here in switzerland that uh, you know it's double the size of costa rica but still you feel like okay you know it's it's uh, it's small especially always like talking about hubs and once you're like within your real realtors uh, hub and network um the word spreads very fast and you really need to make i also think that you really need to make sure that you're a reputation um, stays high and you really that's why it's so important to just you know act ethically well to me uh, I, I i they get tired of me to use that word but to me ethics it's it if yeah. you don't have the uh, 
national or international ethics to do your business, no matter what business you're in, but especially mm-hmm. in our business because our business is based on trust. Mm-hmm. You are trusting me to give you the information that you are going to receive as true. Mm-hmm. And if I don't do that, sooner or later you'll find out and of course you will not deal with me anymore. Mm-hmm. So, and because we're such a small country, also it's important. Small countries, you cannot get lost. Mm -hmm. We know each other. Mm -hmm. And we know where to go, who to talk to, and who is an expert on this, who's an expert on that. And this is perhaps is one of the things that I like about Costa Rica still, you know. Uh, it's quite different as I was growing up because it was a lot smaller, not as many people as we have now. Yeah. But we're still only five million, including including the foreigners, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, previous to our call, you mentioned a little bit, and I would like to touch upon that one, the biodiversity, but also the investment in forest uh, projects and forestation right. projects. Can we... Yeah. Can we? Uh, I know we are we are jumping a little bit um, back back to back to the on the Costa Rican level, but I would really like to to uh, touch upon that because I think it's a super hot topic right now. Also yeah. concerning the CO 2 emission, which you have like reduced to almost zero. Um, tell us a little bit about all the projects which uh, which Costa Rica offers, and also where foreigners um, or even domestic people increasingly invest. Yes, I think, uh, as you well know, Michael, the whole world is uh, very concerned about the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, thank goodness for our idiosyncrasy and uh, uh, the way we are. We're very natural because Mm -hmm. everything is surrounded. We're green, so we have Mm -hmm. green all year round. So for us, it's extremely important. So, uh, and because of it, we lead the world on that. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Uh, Costa Rica has a still, even though it's small, has a lot of land Mm -hmm. and a lot of it, it's uh, uh, public parks. Mm -hmm. But out of those, uh, out of the uh, land, the the forest reserve public ones is 20, I don't want to make a mistake on this. Uh, Let me just read it. Fifty-three percent of the country's area is covered by forests, where 25 belongs to the national park system, 28 under private ownership. Costa Rica is the first country in the Americas to ban recreational hunting. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to carbon neutral soon. We were saying that I think it will be in a few years. Mm -hmm. Ninety-three percent of the country's electricity comes from renewable sources. Mm On September 20th uh, of last year, 2019, Costa Rica received a fantastic award called Champions of the Earth. Mm -hmm. This is an award, the highest environmental honor granted by the United Nations for its role in the protection of the well-being of our planet, our nature and its commitment to ambition policies to combat climate change and the transformation of the economy through the National Decarbonization Plan. This award values the effort to decide to use significant portion of the territory for conservation and use without hurting the biodiversity. Mm -hmm. So because of it, uh, and because we're so conscientious of that, uh, our company decided a few months back to concentrate on the private forest reserve areas, not mm-hmm. only to contribute to the planet and to bring it out to the world, but also to help the economy of the country with a lot of land that people have, but they don't have the liquid or the cash to invest in it. Okay. So one of the ideas is to bring the investment in. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, the... Uh, the green project, as I call it, is in, in our company, is amazing because of it. So uh, the idea is, let me just, if I find, um, to bring all the different opportunities as to how to do it. You know, there is the possibility to invest directly mm-hmm. on the forest reserves mm-hmm. or to 
uh, uh, yeah, we have to go by the rules, of course, of the government and their own private reserves also that have their own rules mm -hmm. that uh, you can only build or develop in the areas that are not forest because mm -hmm. you can invest in that to contribute to the ecotourism or okay. you can invest on, on the corridors to connect all these uh, private forest reserves from Mexico all the way up to, to, uh, to Argentina. Um, corridors as per forest. Cor corridors, it means uh, uh, the, it's a bridge between each um, uh, each forest reserve, but in countries. For instance, we are creating a corridor, which means a, a way, a hallway in between Mexico and, and Guatemala. Okay? okay. So that the reserves are connected to maintain the, the biodiversity and fauna and flora alive. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got so it. this is very important, mm -hmm. uh, and it's called biological uh, corridors. It's C O R R I D O O R S. Yeah. Okay. In Spanish is corredores. Yeah. Corredor in Spanish means you know it's is the hole that jo yeah. joins them together. A yeah, bridge, I was, bridging. I was, you know. Yeah. The, the and I, I, was, I was just uh, wondering if it's like a natural corridor in order to make sure that, as you say, like the biodiversity doesn't get separated. And in That's fact, right. it, it is that. Yeah, I got it. Okay. To, yeah. to get it into, like we have it, you know, with Nicaragua and also they have, so we're trying to bridge that yeah. in the, uh, in, in the, uh, you know, to honor the uh, the planet and to I, make sure I, that nothing I, disappears. I understand. So, um, you know, um, let's say, make let me make or try to make a provocative statement on, on this one. What's in it for the investor um, concerning concerning the investment in such in such uh, projects? Um, do you also get money back? Is, is there a return on investment? Um, yeah, what, there is an investment on that, you know, where people come. And, and if I have a farm that qualifies as a, as a private forest reserve that has mm -hmm. to go through all the rules and regulations, you know, we offer it and where you, where you would invest directly. And it's also a tax benefit or a tax shelter, as it's called, in the United States and in Canada and Europe. So okay. this is one way that you invest. You also through foundations that come and buy through universities that come and uh, use that for investigating. Um, and uh, uh, there's a list of things that right now it doesn't come to mind. But the, and also to uh, to make sure that uh, the country is protected, mm -hmm. not only within the public. Uh, reserve areas but in the private and to do it correctly we have to do it by the rules Got it. that uh, so, of, the, of, the, of the world okay so we're literally talking about like foundations and charity um uh, but no private private you know if you okay. i i have clients that live in the united states in canada and now i have created uh um uh an alliance mm -hmm. with uh, people in uh, Spain, in Madrid and uh, Portugal, where they're going to find uh, for us the investors as well as the financing. Why the okay. financing? Because if, if they invest, okay, in a uh, forest reserve area, mm -hmm. then you will um, also, if it's not within the forest or the primary forest, in the part that is allowed, you can develop, you can build homes, you can build the, the tourist part of it. Got it. And uh, there's a lot of options that, okay. uh, that are really amazing got in it, order got to it, get into this. Okay, so, okay, I, I totally got it now, considering ecotourism and, and all, all the activities you, you can do. And, and exporting, do. and not only that, reforestation also. If you have yeah. land that you need to re reforest, uh, you have the benefits and you get what is called the uh, um, the uh, PSA, which is the, uh, trying to look it up. But anyway, our benefits when you, when you, uh, uh, when you invest on that, yeah. for instance, the programs are available in the governmental agencies. And uh, like selling the certified capacity of CO2, the carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. Uh, to capture by the forest, which is in the growing period, is very high, accumulating up to 40 tons of CO2 per hectare a mm -hmm. year. So they pay you, you know, for the oxygen. Got it, you know? got it. And also they pay you to reforest 
and they pay you for a lot of other benefits in order to preserve the planet. And I think Costa Rica should lead that because we really are into it in a very serious manner. And my idea, since I am uh, uh, the president-elect of SILA, is to bring all those benefits to each country from Mexico all the way to, uh, to Argentina to get the same benefits and to contribute not only to the economy of each country, but also to uh, the preserving of our countries and the planet. You know, I this mean, is you, you, you just mentioned a concept which I haven't, hadn't thought about before, and I think it's wonderful to really, you know, talk return on investment on land measured by the oxygen your you know your your square meters or your land is is generating i haven't to be honest i haven't heard about that maybe it's super present in a lot of countries but you're the first person mentioning that and i think like there we could say okay we it's just a numbers game in fact uh motivating investors not to do anything because there's so many tax incentives or even you know um, subsidies being being paid by the government which says okay we need you know we need to to um, to have uh, x amount of uh, oxygen being produced and then you can even go one step further and say okay each country has to have a percentage of you know oxygen uh, uh, generation in order to uh, in, in order to um, to uh, I don't know like not to to pay any any um, any fees or, or any multas in uh, in in um, internationally well uh, I think all of us are into it you know you you hear one of the things that we're really incentivizing also is for the developers to come and build uh, under uh, the sustainability Mm -hmm. uh, of building, you know, which we have already many projects in Costa Rica who build that way. Yeah. So we want to have them come and invest and uh, help with the uh, economy of the country to contribute to the planet and also get a return on your investment. Absolutely, this yes. is, and this is what we are trying to do. And uh, in our case, I'm bringing it out uh, to the world, because no, and under the banner of Costa Rica, I happen to think that Costa Rica has to lead it because mm -hmm. we are the uh, uh, the ones who have promoted that for a long, long time to preserve it. And the history, I, I don't have enough time to really go into it uh, unless you want to do some other interview some other time mm -hmm. on just the history as to why Costa Rica is leading that. and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is amazing the reasons behind it. I happen to be very lucky that within our group, I have um, uh, one of the most uh, connoisseurs uh, mm -hmm. uh, that know more about this in my group internationally. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he has um, a, a, his own private uh, forest reserve and also he has developed it into uh, ecotourism, and uh, he's done absolutely wonderful. And he is in a lot of international forums, you know, and networkings and foundations. And uh, he is my advisor in order to present one of our projects. He, he has to tell us if he qualifies or not. So when the, we present one of our projects in that area, you will be for sure, know that what we're giving to you is what it requires to have a, for, a private forest reserve. So we're taking this very seriously in the sense that uh, uh, it's not something that is that must be done, but also that uh, uh, the responsibility that this country has to lead it and to do it in such way with people that are very experts in the in the uh, in this subject and to bring it to everyone for their own benefit. Absolutely, absolutely. No, I, I totally agree. I think, you know, there has to be incentives. We are in a, um, mainly in a capitalist uh, world, and um, it is, I think, the, the best way to go to really incentivize investors to, uh, to go um, and, and um, invest in, in, in those properties. L listen to this, which I think is interesting. It says so here... Uh, in a territory as Costa Rica that occupies only 0.3% of the planet, 
there are between three and five percent of all the world's biodiversity. Mm -hmm. We're a tiny country. Mm -hmm. And look at how much in proportion we have because mm -hmm. we have pay attention to make sure that they stay that way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everyone here is very conscientious of the green. In fact, when the dry season comes, I, I enjoy the sun and I, I, I love that, but I miss the green. I have mm -hmm. to have green. Mm -hmm. uh, for me to feel uh, like I'm good in my skin, I have to have the green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of us from Costa Rica, I think we feel that way because we take for granted because we grew up that way. So yeah. now we invite all of you to come and, and join us and, and uh, um, enjoy the, 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 the piece of land that, and the uh, fantastic opportunities that Costa Rica has to offer. No, I, I think you can be super proud of, of, um, of your country and um, all the steps uh, your country has been taken. Uh, to, um, and also, especially, um, I think the entire society is very conscious concerning nature, concerning the importance of it. While if I compare that, to be honest, with uh, most of the kind of the German society where like nature is a part of it. So it's not like we are not that much torn directly towards towards um, being so much um, together with the nature or feel feel that much about it or think about uh, nature that much. And I think it's because it's because, Michael, you have four seasons. We do not. Remember, we have the dry and the wet season. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. So uh, we enjoy all year round the nature. But True. in the uh, countries where you have four seasons, you know, you just half of the time, you don't see the green. You just see That's it true. in springtime and, and fall and the rest is... That. that might be, yeah, that might be it, yeah, it's true. It's yeah, definitely a good point. That's part yeah. of it, that's part yeah. of it. We, we're in it all the time, and that's why I think uh, we take it for granted. You know, mm -hmm. when people come here, you know, I says, oh, this is beautiful, this is beautiful. and I look at it and I say, well, yeah, yes, it's beautiful, but I mean, we see it every day, yeah. and uh, uh, we take it for granted until Absolutely. we go someplace else, and you see, and I miss it. If I go someplace, I always like where I go. I have, mm -hmm. just to tell you a little bit, I lived outside of Costa Rica for 25 years mm -hmm. uh, with my husband, you know, for, for uh, uh, working reasons for him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I lived in every country that I simply loved whatever the country has to offer. Mm -hmm. But I think visiting so many countries, Costa Rica always stands out, not only because it is my country, but it's because in such a tiny place, you have so much to offer. Mm -hmm. And really, the, the biggest asset, like I always say, is the, um, the people. Mm -hmm. If you go to the rural areas in Costa Rica, it's amazing. You go to a small farm, and uh, it could be uh, humble. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the resources are not so high. But they always offer you something. There's mm -hmm. always a smile. There's mm -hmm. always something that you come out of there nice and you cannot refuse it because mm -hmm. otherwise they'll be offended so this is they're givers they're givers they always have a smile and uh, i'm proud of that and i hope you, we never lose it perfect uh, it's 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 a, a nice thing about costa ricans and uh, i miss that sometimes when i go to countries when they are not, not as warm we hug and kiss you know when we uh, see each other i don't know how many times out of the day we hug and kiss, and, and, and we really hug. It's not just <laughs> a pat in the, in, the, uh, in the arm. We just hug and we kiss, and, and we always celebrate it with, uh, with something, a cup of coffee, a drink, or whatever. We celebrate yeah. everything by eating. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. O Ophelia, your, your uh, last words for someone who um, considers um, buying, investing in, in Costa Rica or even a real estate broker, do you have any advice to, to, to the yes. audience um, when it comes to, to real estate in, in Costa Rica? Definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things we stress, I'm going to divide it in two. Mm -hmm. If a broker is outside of Costa Rica, mm -hmm. there is something. Uh, this is something else that I wanted to mention before I, I say what I'm going to say. In Costa Rica, you cannot work unless you're a permanent resident mm -hmm. uh, or a citizen 
of the country, okay? But if you are a broker who lives outside of Costa Rica, is not a, a Costa Rican citizen, mm -hmm. uh, we strongly urge them to always work with a local realtor, accredited mm -hmm. realtor, because mm -hmm. that person uh, which you are looking in the area will know exactly what you need. And that is what is called referrals. Mm -hmm. In my business, the referrals is extremely important. And that what that means is if a broker has a client and sends it to me, he or she will have from 10 to 30 percent of uh, the commission. Mm -hmm. By referring, it depends if they are more involved in the transaction. Sure, the commission will be even higher. Mm -hmm. So that is in 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 the uh, uh, regarding the uh, the brokers mm -hmm. or the uh, agents in the United States mainly, because most of our business uh, in this area is from the states and Canada and now Europe. Mm -hmm. But what uh, that is a very strong advice. It's like. Uh, uh, if I go to the United States, I cannot really uh, practice uh, uh, real estate unless I am accredited mm -hmm. to an association and have the license to mm -hmm. it. It's the same thing. But whether you have a license or not, what makes common sense is to have someone who represents Absolutely. the property and who knows about it. Yeah. So that is the number one in the brokers. Mm -hmm. Now, for someone who is not a broker and want to invest in Costa Rica, the same thing. Look for a broker that is reputable. We have two uh, associations here. Mm -hmm. um, one is the Costa Rican Global uh, Association of Realtors mm -hmm. that is in the coastal areas that is also accredited and ours, which is the uh, uh, Camara Costarricense de Corredores de Bienes Raices mm -hmm. if, to make sure they belong to those associations because of the ethical, the ethical behavior, the rules and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. The international part of it, we have created at the uh, our association an international chapter. So everyone is being now okay. um, educated in that end. So when you look for something and you see the property, make sure that you have someone who's going to advise you properly. Mm -hmm. And then we tell you the pros and cons, because to me, that is my obligation Okay. Uh, to tell you exactly, you know, how it should be done. i would be glad, more than glad to help you in being the best advisors in our country and outside. And also, I want to say something which is very important. Mm -hmm. I promote the exclusivity of the properties. And the reason for that, which a lot of people do not understand, nationally and internationally, mm -hmm. is that it gives me the obligation to distribute this to all the uh, um, realtors nationally and internationally to have the opportunity to sell or rent your property. And why is that? Because our focus is on the client. Mm -hmm. I have to sell or rent that property as fast as possible. My obligation is, is to send it not only to the potential clients, but to the potential brokers that could help me sell or rent that property. This is our motto. We cannot, uh, we don't accept uh, uh, an exclusivity unless the obligation is to distribute it to everyone to to get this uh, sale or rental as fast as possible. This okay. is our main okay. concern. So, so that means I want to have my house sold. I, um, you, you, you take it, you, you take the exclusivity, and then you give me more or less like the service level or the... the, uh, the um... It's usually in a term time. For okay. instance, if you give me an exclusivity, the usual is, it depends on each case. Usually mm -hmm. is, the exclusivity is, within a term of six months to a year. Okay. In Costa Rica right now, because there's, especially in the GAM area, we have so much inventory, it takes a little longer to sell. Mm -hmm. So like in the States, you know, the, the, the flipping and uh, the selling is faster in some mm -hmm. areas, not every area, but it's a lot faster than it is in Costa Rica. But because of it, I am obliged not only to advise you, but to report to you. And in six months, I have to... Uh, sell it, and and it might be renewable to a year mm -hmm. if you if you so uh, desire. In my case, uh, I haven't 
open. If you are happy with me, stay with me. If you're not happy with me, you Got don't it. have to wait for the six months yeah. because what I want is to help. And uh, in my case, I do have very good connections with different brokers, with experts in different areas that I might not be so expert. So I join him and I ask him to come in in order to help me sell. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Awesome. Ophelia, I am super happy we we um, we had this interview. I I learned so many things. Um, I am I don't know like I could even know I don't even know where to start how to wrap it up. I um, appreciate all the information you you gave us entire breakdown about uh, Costa Rica itself, the uniqueness, the biodiversity, the CO2 emission, the zero t CO2 emission, um, San Jose as the capital. Um, how to buy um, taxes, um, how to work with you, um, the entire the entire bi um, forest forest projects and also green green projects. I I think it's it's been a it's been a fantastic interview. I thank you so much for your time today. Um, and yeah, I I know that we're gonna to talk soon again, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Michael. And I think I'm going to convince you to come to Costa Rica. I think you might not leave for a while anyway. That's that's <laughs> The probability is quite high. I, I'm, that's why I'm not coming for now because I know no, I will not. No, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised because there's a lot of other opportunities. There's a lot of uh, uh, options. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Too many. Not, too do many. not hesitate to come. <laughs> awesome. Ophelia, thank you so much. I, have, I wish you a very nice day. Thank you. You too. Okay, you too. thank you. Bye-bye.